I guess we are live. We are live. Let's just wait for a couple of seconds more to see right. if people are joining in. We'll get, we'll get them some time. Right. And in the meantime, uh, for people who have already joined, and I'll repeat it again. So I am Auditro from PyMessage.com, and I am with my colleague, Rithik. Say hi, Rithik. Hi, everyone. So today, it's going to be image classification with Jax. Why Jax? How image classification? This is a, a invite-only stream for people who have bought our Jax course. And this is a bonus live lesson for them. The Collab Notebook is already shared in the community. So people who already have bought our course and are here, you can quickly go into the communities and check for the Collab Notebook so that you can go along with us. And with that, I will wait a couple of more seconds and also see whether we have comments. So let, let us know where you are, where you are from. Uh, and welcome to the image classification with Jack's live stream. Uh, that's, I think we should wait for a couple of seconds or do we start? Yeah, yeah. let's wait for a couple of more seconds. Okay. Give them, give everyone some time to settle in. Well, I've joined. I want comments. I want comments. Drop in a hi, everybody who is here. Just a hi. That would make it make us feel right at home. I'm also looking at the. YouTube. Live All right. Stream. I think I think we have got a few people in. Let's join. Uh, let's start the session, and uh, hopefully more people will be joining in once we uh, once we go along. Cool. So again, for people who have just joined, uh, I'm Auditro and uh, I'm with my colleague and friend Rithik. We are from PyMessage.com. And uh, today's live stream is going is an invite only live stream. So this is very special for people who are watching. You are the special people who have joined us, and this is uh, for the Jacks course. So this is a live bonus live lesson that we wanted to share with people who have already bought the Jacks course. So why a bonus stream, and what is uh, this Jacks course that you have gotten? So. What we try to do in PyMed Search is that we take up a repository, take up a coding language, take up something, and break it down into chunks. And that is what we do best. So uh, we got a lot of hype on JAX and also a lot of comments that, hey, PyMed Search, let's do JAX. Come on. It's time that we uh, you know, covered another language or another framework. And we did just that. So with uh, three blog posts and three mini courses, we created what is now you have Jax beginners, right? So in the three courses or in the three blog posts that we cover, we covered how Jax came about or what evolved into Jax. And then we covered how uh, Jax has a NumPy abstraction, which we can use, and also the grad, JIT, and VMAP and PMAP abstractions that we use all the time. And, and the third, in the third part, which is the ending part of this Jack series, we covered how to, you know, do your first basic neural network model and also backpropagate it using pie trees and whatnot in Jacks only. So the entire team was like, uh, that's good, but do we not give them something to, uh, of, of, of computer vision, of applications that they are going to be very excited about? So this is what came up. Uh, this is image classification with Jax. And here what we do is we not only create a model, uh, which is a classification model with Jax and Flax and Optax. And these are jargons, I know. But uh, we are going to cover them in the, our collab notebook. So we not only did that, we also built the entire model, trained it from scratch, used a, uh, used a custom data set, and uh, there we have the collab notebook. So another pointer before we start 
is that this collab notebook is readily available for everyone of you who have joined in you will find this in the communities uh, of community section of our course uh, rithik has not only linked the live youtube stream but also the collab notebook so thanks rithik for that and you can you you will have viewer access so fork this and create a collab notebook on your own run it as we go along and also ask questions we are we are in here for this very uh, you know hour for uh, one particular thing is that we want to interact with you so go to your communities fork your collab notebook run it along with us if you have any questions queries anything we are here to help right so having said that let's get started so what we do first in our collab notebook is import something called flax uh that's good what is flax flax is nothing but a high performance neural network library so remember how we said that jax is not a neural network library rather it's a library for maths and due to the fact that deep learning and uh, deep learning is like a overlay between maths and automatic differentiation and what not jax can be used as a deep learning library but it's not only that so that takes away jax but what is flax now flax is this neural network library that is only built to make neural networks so think about pytorch think about tensorflow think about flax right they all come under the same umbrella they are a neural network library in which we can create models in which we can create hyperparameters biases weights and all that stuff and then we can back propagate using the grad of jax and everything works fine so another part which uh, we need to also convey is that flax is built on top of jax so if you go to the flax repository you will find right at home because everything is written in uh, maintainable jax and scalable jax code so the two pointers that we have here is that it's not only a high performance neural network library that is flax it's also maintainable scalable and performant due to the fact that it's written on top of jax right so that's one thing uh and we import what is called jax we import the numpy abstraction of jax we'll use it later and we also import flax right so the three imports were well in good coming to something called linen and linen is this neural network api so think about flax and inside of flax you will have something called as linen so from flax import linen and this linen api enables us to easily define this neural network models right in a in a very pythonic manner so if you go to go back to our uh, last course on jax you will see how difficult it is for us to create a model you have a function you have weights and biases you have a lot of things going on you have states and what not but using this linen you can create the entire model in just one class and you're good to go we'll we'll create a we'll create our model with linen and as uh, it's already commented linen from flax seeds so that is where linen comes from so it's flax can be termed as flax seeds and linen comes out of that so threading out of that uh that's a neat neat little uh, caveat to know and we also import linen from flax and this is something which uh, has always uh, made me uh, smile a little we do from flax import linen as nn which is very similar to how we do torch the nn model so it's kind of very similar when you look at linen code you uh, seem to be in a pytorch environment but not really but it's very similar to that and also uh, i'll not talk much about it right now we also uh, take the train state we'll come to train state a little later but just remember that we have something called train state and we are importing it from a very big api that is flax training train state we import train state so two things that you got to remember right now is that there is something called flax which is a neural network library 
and you uh, also import linen, which is from this flax as NN. Train state comes a little later. Another import, uh, and I swear this is the last import that we are going to do, and we'll quickly move on to code. And this is optax. So think about an entire training training paradigm or or the neural network model training. You have to create these weights and biases. You have to create the model. You have this data pipeline that gets feed forward inside of this model. And there is something called as an optimizer, right? The Adam optimizer, the stochastic gradient descent optimizer, the RMS prop optimizer and whatnot. And these optimizers are responsible for updating your states or the weights and biases so that the model gets to learn better uh, on each iteration. So it turns out that you can create everything in JAX. That is, you can create your model with JAX. You can create your data pipeline with JAX. You can create your op uh, optimizers with JAX. Everything works off the bat. But it's just easier because uh, easier if you do it with Flax, if you do it with Linen, if you do it with Optax. Because they, the abstractions are already there, you just have to plug and play. And Optax is just the gradient processing and optimization library for JAX. So you have now you have a mother repository called JAX, which we have covered in our entire course. And we are branching off from that mother repository into two small repositories. One is Flax, which is a neural network API or library. And the other is Optax, which is only which only incurs optimization algorithms for the entire models. Does that make sense? So JAX comes out, Flax and Optax. That is it. That is the entire framework that we are going to deal with our Polar Notebook today. So doing that, we have Optax. And these are all the nifty utility uh, models that we always take care of. That is TensorFlow, TensorFlow datasets, CV2, NumPy, uh, some utilities, functools, partial and matplotlib, which are which will be necessary later. And we also set AutoTune because this is going to uh, you know, increase our timelines for TF.data. If you are not familiar with AutoTune, PyMed Search has you covered. We also have TF.data blog posts. So just go to PyMedSearch.com and in the search area, go for TF.data. We have a brilliant series on TF.data if you're unfamiliar with that. So that covers every import. We also have this just to check with the imports because sometimes uh, the versions of each individual libraries change, and that might create some discrepancy in the API. So we just wanted to, you know, take a snapshot of what are the versions of each an individual library. So JAX, FLAX, OPTAX, TF, and TFDS. These are the essential libraries that we are going to use, and all the versions can be seen here. Right. So now that we have imported uh, our entire uh, arsenal of tools that we are going to use, what we will go ahead with is our configuration. So we have to configure our model, right? The entire training data line, data pipeline. So the configurations include, include learning rate. That is the learning rate of the optimizer at which learning rate is going to make the model learn. Number of epochs, we have kept it to 25. You, are, you please feel free to change every configuration and see what works, what does not. We have kept it to 25 so that it's easier to run on a collab and it's faster for us because we have to iteratively go through the entire collab notebook for this talk. So 25 epochs is just a sweet spot that we have chosen. Batch size is the batch number of images uh, inside of one batch. So there will be 32 images inside of one batch. And the spatial shape is the shape in which these uh, images are going to get resized to. So come to think of it, if you have a data set of images, each data set or each data point or each image for that matter uh, does not have or might not have a similar shape. So one can be a big image, one can be a small image, one can be a, a little lengthy image or for lack of a better term. And what we have got to do is we have got to batch the entire all these variable spatial sizes into one batch. And for that, what we do is we resize each and every one of these images into a uniform spatial shape. This uniform spatial shape being 256 by 256. So there are 256 pixels 
in height and 256 pixels in width. So there are the total of 256 squared spatial pixels. And also a channel is three because R, G, and B, right? And what the entire uh, image classification pipeline is going to do is we're going to use a data set called citrus leaves, which is, uh, which is images of just leaves with black spots, with canker, with greening, and healthy as labels. And we have got to classify each leaf into these labels. That is black spot, being a canker, being a greening, and healthy. And think about it, this application is very widely used in uh, agriculture. This has a very good, um, how do you say, it? very good use case in agriculture. And people might just take our collab notebook, and this is industry, uh, industry ready. They take our collab notebooks, make a custom data set, or uh, have a custom data set with huge amount of leaves, make a lot of class names, and just right off the bat, train this model, and you know uh, you can use it on your farm fields, or maybe even your uh, vegetable uh, area, or your plant section in your home, and you can check for black spots, or whether it's healthy or not, whether it's greening, and so on. So it has a lot of applications that you can uh, you know, think about. So going to the data sets, as we said, we are going to use citrus leaves, which is readily available inside of TensorFlow data sets uh, hub. And what we are going to do is get the data set. So the functions are uh, ordered in their individual format. So the first function that we are going to talk about is map function, uh, which is where we resize each and every individual data point. We also extract the images and labels because that is what we need. We need images and also the labels in which the model is going to you know, categorize the image into. We resize them and we return the images and labels. And that is what exactly happens in the code. So the map function takes in elements and a configuration file. The images and labels are taken from these element dictionary, right? And they are, the images are resized, and uh, what we return is the images and labels. So the images corresponding label is getting returned. Now let's load the data set. I'm going to skip the text section. It's for people who are only getting the collab notebook and not the YouTube video. So for the for video, let's skip the text and straight away go into the code. So it's called load data set, def load data set, which only takes in configuration. So as the name suggests, load data set loads the data set. And we also have a very handy tfds.load. And the tfds is short for TensorFlow data sets. tfds.load takes in citrus leaves. It splits the train uh, validation and test. And for the, for the fact that we don't have uh, validation and testing split, we take the trains 80% as our training, training pipeline trains 80 to 90 percent that is the 10 percent as our validation pipeline or data set and trains 90 to 10 100 percent that is the 10 percent as our testing uh, data set so we split the entire training data set into train validation and test and validation and tests are kept away from us we only get to have this 80 percent of the training data set right so that it's easier for us not to overfit on the mod on, on the data and hence also worth it on the model. So that happens. We also had this partial function of map. We, why do we use a partial function? It's very simple. A map function does not take anything else than an element. And here using the partial function, we already tell them, okay, hey, this configuration is something which is static. Don't have to worry about it. We already give you this configuration. You just have, you just have to care about the elements that get in, right? So that's cool. Uh, and here we do a bunch of map. That is, we map each uh, images into this 256 by 256. Remember how we resized it and then batched it? So we map it, we shuffle it, we batch it, and then prefetch it. So that happens for the validation, validation data set as well. But the test data set does not... Uh, I'm sorry, the test data set has the same thing because there are no augmentations. I was about to say that the test data set does not map anything, but then uh, wisdom dawned on me and said, hey, just leave it. So train, validation, and test, we have that. 
and here we are done with the entire data pipeline so once you have this train validation and test data set you can easily feed forward these these into our model but hey let's create a model first and we call it a small model that is a smol model because it's literally quite small in its parameters and how do we do it we go to the we create a class called small vgg net and nn dot module and nn is the linen api that we had imported using the alias as nn and the nn dot module gives us this class kind of architecture in which we can create our own uh, model step by step so let's go step by step the call function is what is getting called uh, for the model and the call function gets in as you have guessed it x that is the images so a model takes in images and and gives out uh, a prediction of which class it belongs to right so if you uh, input x as the images and you put a con relu con relu these extract your uh, featured maps from the images and then after you have these spatial maps or attention maps or featured maps or representation maps whatever you call it you have to reshape it to flatten these entire things out remember how cons work on these spatial dimensions and they slide on this image so in 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 turn the cons also give you an image spatial size with a long num large number of channels right now what you have got to do is you have got to flatten this entire thing out into a sequence and the sequence entirely goes into a dense that is one uh, non linear layer and this layer will give you four predictions y4 let's go up up and to the configurations and see how many class names we have we have four classes hence we will get four predictions out of these four predictions we will be saying that hey this model that is the small vgg net said this leaf to belong to a healthy category or maybe a greening category or a canker or a black spot category that is how the entire thing is laid out let's go down and you know why uh, features is equal to 4 now and you return x so you just return the logits it's not a prediction yet it's logits because we did not have a softmax we did not have anything other than just the nonlinearity on it so it's it does not have any prediction or probability term linked to it it's just logits and due to the fact that we have created a small model we also wanted to summarize what goes where how big the model is and you can see that the total parameters is about 16.8 mbs in size which is very small very very small and you can have this entire summary with nn dot tabulate that is linen dot tabulate which gives a pretty nice looking uh, you know table for the entire model so that is where i leave you all uh, we what we did is we covered the imports we had jax mother library and then we branched off to optax and uh, flax and now we also wanted to use flax to see how a uh, uh, you know a small vgg net is built so we built that we also had this nn dot tabulate to summarize the entire thing and we also uh, created our tf.ds or tf.data uh, pipeline so i'll hand it over to rithik now who is going to take you uh, into the training steps so over to you rithik right thank you and uh, welcome everyone i would say that 50% of the battle is already won because our data set has been created and uh, all of the pre processing functions have been successfully mapped so now we go into the uh, the nitty gritty parts of what how we define training step in jax and flax and you would notice this that the usual way of doing it in tensorflow or keras or even in pytorch is not the way we do it in jax we kind of have to create our own training loop uh, write it from scratch or you know take uh, write our own helper functions from scratch and the reason uh, why we have to do that is jax likes things to be pure 
um, it wants pure functions and therefore uh, we have to kind of preserve the state and have the state be the central narrator who is going through all of the all of the functions and weaving the story of training your image classification model so with that uh, and without further ado we will go into what is the first step uh, we obviously define the uh, pseudo random number and we create a random number generator from that if you have uh, any doubt about what a pseudo random number generator is or if you want to understand it in a better way we have covered this in the uh, first blog post on jax i think and uh, just go back to our series on jax in pyme search read through it uh, we go into uh, really um, a very detailed way on what prng key is so uh, i i'm sure that would help you and it it also kind of lays down the differences between a random number in numpy and a random number in jax we in the next line we split the random key we split it because we will be passing it to different uh, functions and we want those functions to preserve the state uh, we want those functions to be pure and not reuse the same variable over and over again, uh, changing its state and changing the uh, changing the state of the function. So that's that's the reason we split it. But if you want a more detailed explanation, we go over it in the previous blog post. So with that, we we what we are going to do here is create the initial train state, and what what this does is it prepares everything that is uh, needed to start um, training of the model. And uh, uh, these would be initializing the model, uh, creating the model parameters, defining the optimizer from optax, and uh, then uh, obviously building the train state. So um, if we go into the code, the model is first uh, initialized, our small VGG net. And uh, the model parameters are then uh, initialized as well. And when, then we take the optimizer, which in this case is Adam. And you can see that we are passing the learning rate, which Arithro mentioned that we have defined in the um, in the uh, section where, like in the configurations. And uh, the optimizer that we are using in this case is Adam. Right after that, we build the train state. Remember train state, Arthur mentioned about how we are importing train state uh, from um, uh, Flax. And uh, that is the same train state API that we are using here. We use uh, the dot create function and then use the model dot apply uh, function inside of it with the parameters and the optimizer. So these are the param like these are the parameters that the train state dot create function takes in and uh, it it provides you with it provides you with the uh, it returns the state of the um, of of the training pipeline and next what we are doing going to do is writing the training loop and uh, uh, this is like this is that major step or the major you know uh, part or the job that you need to do that you need to execute every step of the way when you're training the model so uh, as i said like this kind of things are more abstracted away when we see when we go into kedas and tensorflow but here you have to kind of write your own training loop and there are a few benefits that come with it one is that we understand every little detail what is going on under the hood and it it really kind of uh, forces you to think of state as a way to you know navigate your code as opposed to you know just passing the output of one function to another function and then to another function uh, so what we are going to do here is we are going to create the train step method which takes in the state and the batch and then we're going to extract the data uh, calculate the loss calculate the gradients uh, based on those laws uh, update the state um, and then um, uh, find the accuracy and return the loss accuracy and state uh, to uh, from the function. So uh, we we write the train step function here, and we, uh, as you can see, we jit this function, which is short or apprehended for just in time, 
And if you do not remember what just-in-time compilation is, we have again covered it in part two and um, yeah, part two of the Jack's beginner-friendly series. So uh, that those blog posts are published. They are already inside the course. If you have not understood JIT or if you have not, uh, you know, read up about JIT yet, please go ahead and watch those videos. Uh, watch, go through those. Um, go through those uh, blog posts and and then uh, go through this video. So we we create this train step function. And as I said, it takes in state and batch and uh, we extract the images and labels from the batch, pretty standard stuff. Then we have the loss function, which is like uh, we calculate the loss uh, from the logits and uh, the loss is calculated from optex optex.softmax cross, en cross entropy with integer labels. Um, that's a huge name for a function, but it's very, like I would say it's really well documented because it really tells you what exactly it is doing with the function name. So uh, I'm sure cross entropy would be basic knowledge by this time. If it's not, again, we cover it in details in PyMess search. I'm sure the link would be posted uh, in the live chat in a second. And uh, so, yeah, Optex uh, has that API, softmax cross entropy with integer labels. And all we need to do is pass in the logits and the labels and then find the loss from it. And uh, finally, we return the loss and the logits from the, from the loss function. So that's standard stuff again. Then we find the derivative of the loss with respect to the parameters. This is needed for back propagation. We have to kind of find the uh, derivative so that we know whether the loss is going down or not. It is our way of uh, saying that the delta is, uh, is smaller or larger than the previous delta. And the way we do that is using an API from JAX called value and grad. It is basically a way to find a derivative. And we have also covered that. I'm sure this is getting pretty re repetitive at this point. But um, the reason we are not explaining all of this little APIs in here is either they have all been covered in all of the three previous blog posts, or they will be covered um, in the subsequent blog post, which is going to be about image classification with JAX and FLAX. So uh, for example, APIs like OPTAX and uh, FLAX or training state will be covered in the subsequent blog post, which is going to be about image classification with JAX and FLAX. But this is just to give you an idea of how, uh, how image classification can be done in JAX and like what are, the, um, what are the pros and cons of it. So we find the, we find the derivative and then we get the uh, loss and logits uh, and the gradients from, from the grad function. Uh, we update the training state because we have to kind of do this iteratively. So we have to update it uh, in each step. Uh, so the state, like we apply the gradients to that step. And then we finally find, uh, calculate the accuracy of accuracy metric of the image classification task using, um, you know, uh, the logits that, that we already have. And then finally, we return the loss, accuracy, and state, the three main uh, like building blocks that we need for the for the further steps. The next helper function that we have is uh, is going to help us to evaluate how well we are doing and like whether our model is actually predicting uh, as it is supposed to predict and it is uh, understanding whether the the you know leaves are healthy or not. So. What we, what we do here is write a helper function. And then we JIT that function, obviously, again, because we want that function to be optimized as well. It's not just that the training loop or the part which is being invoked into the training loop needs to be optimized. Your entire like pipeline and all your helper functions should be as optimized as possible. Um, uh, don't, don't JIT your uh, config class, by the way. Uh, that's useless. So we write the eval step helper function and we pass the state and batch to it. Again, same thing. 
we extract the images and the labels from the batch and then we calculate the logits from the from the state we calculate the loss uh, based on the optex dot softmax cross entropy with integer labels api and then we find the accuracy from the logits and what do we return we return the loss and the accuracy okay so now we have almost like 70% of the entire thing done what we need to do is like we have created the train step the the main thing that needs to be done now we need to lay down what are the steps for each epoch like when when the model actually goes through from epoch 1 to epoch 1000 uh, i don't think you need to run this for 1000 and we'll see the reason why but uh, when it does eventually go through all of the epochs it needs to you know finish a couple of steps so we are going to lay down those steps in another helper function right now and this function is going to be called train epoch you know uh, very innovative name but um, this uh, train epoch function will be taking in our data sets our state and our epoch and at this point i want you to pause and ponder that what is a common thing uh that goes through all of the helper functions that we have gone through till this point of time and it's it's almost batch but you know as as you can see this helper function does not need batch so what what you really need is state uh, and the state variable is actually weaving through all all of your functions and is preserving you know what i like to say the narrative of where you are exactly at your training uh, pipeline so this is like if we go through all of the pointers here uh, we we can relate to any machine learning pipeline or machine learning model that we have trained before this we initialize the metrics we we need we need to understand whether our model is doing good or bad so we need to understand its accuracy its loss uh, its training accuracy and its validation accuracy standard stuff so we need um, you know lists or variables to store them we write the training step uh, based on the train ds or the train data set and we write the validation loop based on the validation data set and uh, we calculate the metrics for both of them uh, you know the mean metrics for training and mean metrics for validation and uh, show them to the user because otherwise how would we know and then return the state so that's all of the things that we need to do and once we have them laid down here for like in real simple english we now understand what are the steps we need to follow in uh, in the code so again what we do is we create the list that will store our metrics for our evaluation then we iterate over the training data set and train the uh, vgg model a uh, small vgg model excuse me and uh, uh, store the loss and the accuracy in the specified metrics or list of metrics that we have created then we do the same for the validation data set and then we calculate the mean uh, of those metrics uh, for training and validation respectively we print those out and then we return the state because again state is the central thing that is Uh, connecting all of our all of our helper functions and finally what we need to do is uh, flick the switch uh, we need to train the model and uh, for that uh, ironically there's just four lines of code uh, we get the state from the initial train state uh, which is defined in the config we um, get the train validation and test data set uh, from the load data set function that also explained so nicely 80% train and uh, 80 to 90 validation uh, you get the rest and uh, then we go from uh, go run through all of the epochs that we have uh, again we fetch that from the config and we calculate the state and that state since we have already defined uh, you'll say that okay we are just getting the state uh, out of this where is the model where is uh, where is the training happening where is you know the accuracy getting printed and you if you remember or if you scroll up you would see that every helper function has its dedicated job 
and it's actually either calculating the accuracy or calculating the loss or printing it out to the user. And so the state, you know, at the very end, you just need to call the state and uh, store it or not store it. You know, you could, you could just have an underscore here. It wouldn't matter. And what would, what would happen is uh, all of the helper functions would do their, execute their job because the state is getting passed through each of them. So uh, big words, but does the code back it up? And we can see that, uh, you know, accuracy is pretty, pretty high and, um, you know, loss is going down. And this is like, this is for 24 epochs. I mean, we, we kind of train it for 24 epochs. So, so obviously it's doing well for 24 epochs. Uh, the data set is kind of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a simple data set uh, if we are being modest, but uh, if, you, if you want to you know, scale it up, as Aritra said, have your own data set, have hundreds and you know, thousands of classes for your leaves or, or whatever your data set has, then that will fit directly into this code. You do not have to change much into the code. Obviously you would need better compute. Don't try to run it at 24 epochs and say that it fails, but uh, uh, what what do you need to do when when you have a bigger data set or when you have a bigger problem is scale up. That's what we try to do here at PyMessage is help you with production ready code so that you understand like not what it is to write a toy code and uh, with toy data sets, but write production level code that you just need to scale up when you need to. Uh, okay. So all of that is done. Our training is done. Uh, and all we need to do is see that it does well on the, on the test data set that we kept aside um, at the beginning of our, of our training pipeline. So we extract the test images and test levels from the test data set. And then we calculate the logits from, from uh, you know, the parameters. And then we find the predictions. Uh, uh, from from those logics, and we try to see if those predictions are correct or not. And what we have done for that is create a helper function that is going to you know plot uh, plot the images for us and show the predictions on top of it. So that helper function is is uh, uh, like here we loop over all of the predictions. Obviously, we don't want to see on uh, one particular image, whether it's doing well or not, we want to see it on all of the test images. So we loop over that and uh, we generate the ground truth. So GT level is your ground truth and prediction level is your prediction that you have calculated from the logits. And we uh, generate those, um, those texts and we build, the, um, build those texts and put them onto the image. And uh, I mean, this is just, this is just a plain, you know, matplotlib uh, stuff. Uh, but what it gi gives us is, is something like this. And I apologize for the font and the color of the font, but um, this is what OpenCV and matplotlib had. Uh, so bear with me guys. But you can see that, you know, uh, in some cases it fails. It's not always so rosy, but in most cases uh, it kind of gets it right. And that's what matters because uh, obviously with machine learning, the, the pursuit is perfection, but you never actually reach it. And that's what makes it so interesting. So um, the, your data set training is done. I mean, this is like um, the explanations took up most of the time, but if you had to go through the code, I'm sure this wouldn't take you more than 10 to 15 minutes. So that's how easy it is to get get through image classification, uh, a complex problem like image classification on leaves with jacks and flags. And it is really interesting as well because you have to kind of write your own training loop, write your own training step, uh, define your own training step, define the model parameters and everything and uh, like do the work that other frameworks does for you. So uh, that kind of, you know, gives like instills in you the discipline or the confidence that, you know, the other problems or other 
you know larger uh, models and uh, more difficult tasks would be difficult sure but they will still be you know in line with what you have learned here you kind of need to have your state follow through all of your all of your helper functions you have to write your own training loop define what what it, what job needs to be done in those training loops and make sure that your you know data fetching and data loading pipeline is solid so um golden pointers i think um in in those respect that you kind of need to follow and uh, as we like i think as we go through uh, more models and more you know uh, difficult tasks uh, in the later half of this uh, of this series we will kind of understand that all we really need is more helper functions uh, that does uh tackle smaller chunks of the problem and we have to weave through those helper functions and get our job done so that was it uh, from our side image classification with jax uh, i'm um, going to stop blabbering here for a minute and uh, hand it over to arthro if he has to say anything right so now that we have uh, trained our small vgg net what comes next uh and this is uh due to the fact that it's an invite only stream uh we can disclose it to you people so what comes next is a series on jax but not what is jax how do you use jax it's more uh for intermediate to advanced level where we cover uh, applications where we cover models like vision transformers where we cover nlp side of things where we also cover uh big applications i might not name them but they are huge so that's what we that's what is cooking inside of pymetsage and we would really want you all to uh, be in that course as well but yeah that's that's uh, what is next for the time being we left you all with uh, how jax came came to be as in autograd automatic differentiation what jax is as in grad j to be map p map how you are going to create your first machine learning model with jax with py trees and stuff and with this bonus uh, live lesson we talk about what uh, jax has to offer as in flax and optax so stick around is what we are going to tell you uh, because uh, another course is coming up it's lined up we are already in the process of uh training those big models with jax and flax and optax and what not and are pretty sure that it's going to come out pretty soon so that is what's next and till that time i think bye right i think uh we are not going to have any more questions so uh let us know if you're watching this uh, later on let us know in the comments in in community in uh, um, wherever you can reach us uh, not twitter i'm just kidding anywhere you can reach us uh, let us know whether you liked this or not whether you want such um, streams or such content which is kind of a segue into um, uh, a more advanced topics uh, whether you you need any other topics on jacks or or any other um, frameworks from us and uh, till that time as arthro said it best bye thank you everyone